What's up everyone, Trent here. Along with Julia. Okay, Mera Queen, Mera the comic version. We have just come from a screening of Aquaman, Jason Momoa, Amber Heard, Willem Dafoe, all star cast. What do we think of it? Stay tuned to find out. And as always, you're watching The, the Fortress. Fortress. All right, so I think we have mixed feelings about I this movie. I think we really do have mixed feelings about this movie. I personally loved it. I liked a lot of it, but I know you're apprehensive. What, do you, what didn't you like? Well, what did you like first? I actually really liked the CGI. Mm. I was It was probably one of the most worrying things, that one of my biggest worries going into it, that the CGI was going to look so bad, especially with all the underwater scenes. Yeah. The hair did a little bit annoying, just coming from a female, knowing how hair goes in the water. But apart from that, I was really, really happy with the CGI and how the whales looked and how the sharks looked and how the tridents were. And it was really cool. Considering that probably 95% of this movie is entirely CGI, CGI. made, yeah. it is phenomenal what they've done. Whether it dates kind of like a movie like Spawn has, will be mm. remain to be seen because there are things we think, okay, that's really clunky. But considering it is a almost two and a half hour long movie yeah. and you are living in this underwater aqua world, it is just phenomenal just how much attention to detail they have, whether yeah. it's just the bubbles that are digitally put in, um, the way the... Uh, or that kind of that feel in the screen where it kind of warped a little bit. Yeah, that was really interesting. Yeah. And they also had a verbal touch to that as well where mm. it had a bit of a flange to it. Yeah. So it got that kind of underwater feel. But... The, the CGI was fantastic. I didn't mind the hair, and I love the addition of the capes. It kind of went oh, the with the current. the capes looked great. The capes looked great. The hair annoyed me. Yeah, that was it. but it went with the... To, to me, it felt like it went with the current, but you're just being nitpicky. I'm being nitpicky. Um, the acting left a bit to be desired on my part, especially I know on you're... All parts yeah so jason, jason had fun jason had fun that was clear because jason was playing himself which he's been playing himself in almost every single acting role he's ever had mm -hmm. and i have no issue with, with that amber heard amber i don't heard, like i don't like her there was just there was something missing and i didn't know what it was because i really wanted to enjoy the character but i just felt like it was always out of reach S something missing yeah expression well yeah it was kind of like she didn't really uh, express much she expressed more than what nicole kimben did I don't know how Nicole keeps getting work. I, she I'm, she's she's she was solid for a mother figure, but even then, it, it was just they're just how can someone a not age twenty eight years? Yeah, and still not develop their acting skills. The cast Willem Dafoe was a standout for me as Volko. Yes. He he played the mentor really really well. Jason had a lot of fun. He was really enjoyable and basically he's the lead, so he had to be. Amber yeah. Heard I wasn't a big fan of as Mira. It, it just felt. And I don't think that's her fault. I feel like that's the overall plot's fault. Yes. In that it was very rushed. Everything was moving at breakneck pace without any really? cause for development. I found it going really slow with no development. So you're sitting there going, and I'll probably get slaughtered for this in the comments, but I got bored because there were just times where I'm like, mm-hmm. It was mm -hmm. long. Can are we going? Oh, cool! All right, this looks really interesting. We've had a flashback, and the flashbacks ended. Oh, yeah, it w it was quite a long movie, and there could have been a lot of things that were cut out to make it flow a bit better. Mm. There were some really, and by pacing, I mean you started to get some momentum with a particular scene. Yes. But then, boom, it changed to something else. Mm. And you mentioned those flashbacks. I really enjoyed those flashbacks because the way they were done, it. The, the one thing that I have to congratulate this film on was the dynamic camera movement. Yes. It was consistently moving and every, it was showing the entire scope of the action yeah. and just the scope of the world that it's building. It, they basically went through, I think they went through five of the seven seas. Yes. And, and that's what I mean. Once something started to develop, it cut away to something else yeah. really quickly and then you didn't see that again. Like the Sicily fight, we basically got all that in the trailer. Yes. Um, against Black Manta. And the ending, which, well, the big climactic battle, that didn't occur the way I thought it was going to occur. And mm. it kind of ended abruptly. But they needed to put all these different elements in to build Orm up as a, you know, well, villain not, that had motive. That's what I was thinking. Like, we had Black... Uh, Black Manta and then... You're about to say Black on. Mamba. Was, yeah. <laughs> Black Mamba. I'm tired. Um, I've had popcorn for dinner. Um, but I, I really feel like they just should have gone with one villain. 
Yeah. And just raise him up as Ocean Master well, and really he, plug that. Well, here's the issue there. They have taken a lot of elements from the New 52 run. Yes. Particularly the Throne of Atlantis story arc. And they've gone with the what has happened in a lot of sto- uh, stories in the comics where Orm enlists the help of the outside world to wage war, yes. which is Black Manta. So that has been yes. built on, and that's where you need to establish Black Manta as a, as a credible character in what is his motive for going after Arthur, which is done, and I love... He's my favourite part yes, of the movie, he's one of my, He's one of my favourite part of the movies. I just think that action scene with his, him fighting in Sicily wasn't needed. Oh, I th- oh yeah, I think, okay, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I think him building the suit and him getting his suit and how that, and then seeing him like having another smaller fight scene... And then seeing him next movie, sequel, whatever, mm-hmm. and coming back stronger and as a more powerful villain, I think would have had a lot more impact. But and that's how he gets fun. the suit. But that's how he gets... That's why he allowed the introduction of the yeah. suit, but not how that scene played out. Yeah, fair enough. And once again, that's the thing. There were a lot of elements that just were thrown in. That's right, yeah. They were thrown right in. There's a lot of... For anyone who doesn't know anything about Aquaman, there is a lot of lore... That is delivered verbally. A lot of lore delivered verbally, yeah. Um, in a movie such as Black Panther, you kind of had some of the some of the lore shown through um, the building, building and history yeah. and stuff. This had a tiny bit, but it was the first thirty minutes to build the motive as, as to why Arthur needs to return to Atlantis was boom impactful. Yes. It was a lot to take in. It was sensory overload because yeah. you had these beautiful images of. Every 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 scene was beautifully done. James Wan actually deserves a really big round of applause he does. for this. It was absolutely stunning. Um, but it was just sensory overload with the information he had to take in. I'm lucky enough to love Aquaman. I mean, he's my favourite DC character, yeah. so I knew exactly what was going on through the entire thing. But for someone who's new and doesn't know anything about him and only knows him from Justice League, they were like, "Whoa, take yeah. him right out!" And but this is a very fun movie. Oh, it's heaps of fun. Very it is fun. so much, like, especially with how DC was going with Justice League and Batman vs. Superman, and even Wonder Woman to some extent, having that really, really dark movies. The colours in this, the brightness. It was vibrant. It was vibrant, yeah. and it was happy, and there were jokes, and... It was a good was blend good. of different different types of storytelling. Yes. It, you had the dark moments, which was shown through the tragedy of mm. Arthur... And the reason why he was, you know, kind of going to Atlantis yes. and why Orm was on the throne. Um, and then you had the humour. Uh, you had Amber Heard trying to crack jokes. You had you had Black Manta cracking a lot of jokes. But, and he yeah. was fantastic. He, he's still my favourite part of the movie. But yeah. the thing that... The, the, the thing that I... Is, is making this not a perfect movie for me is simply just the pacing mm. and some really terrible music choices. Oh, my God. The music was horrendous. The... So what, one of the music choices that I loved was that every time Aquaman was about to kick ass, we got this awesome guitar wow. rift, kind of, and that took me back to Wonder Woman, and the probably one thing I liked about Wonder Woman was when she was about to kick ass, we got that theme. Yeah. And I like that. But then there were just some choices where you were enjoying a really beautiful scene or a beautiful moment, and there is pop music over the top of it yeah who, and it just took it away like the rains who, down in africa whoever mix. whoever got pitbull to do that song oh deserves to be fired but yeah just but, no i would have rather the classic or just instrumental the whole way through and allow songs for the credits yeah but vi- visually this was a fantastic film stunning. the suit popped every suit popped on screen yes. ocean masters looked amazing i can't believe how much puffy paint they must have gone through yeah amber heard's suit that looked fantastic mm. um I, I, lo- I loved all the different elements of the comics that were in there. The tr- you had the trench, you had um, you had all the different animals. You even had um, the history of the trident, which mm. once again was really interesting. But if you don't know it, you're kind of going along for the ride. Yes. And that's what this movie is. It had it had Indiana Jones vibes. It had Star Wars, Wars vibes. vibes. Yeah. It had so many movies that you just thought this has influenced that, and it's great. There's yeah. even horror. James Wan's favorite. You know, genre that got it's him big, horror, horror and there's mm. there's horror scenes essentially in there as yes. well. It's a great blend. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, so that's why I'm going to give it an eight out of ten. Okay, I'm going to give it a six. I enjoyed it, but the, tra- the actually the trailers ruined this for me. If I had gone in completely blind without seeing the trailers, I would have enjoyed it so much more. Yeah, but see, what I think they were trying to do with that is they were trying to instill confidence yes. in that oh, they're oh, building a great course. movie in the trailers because they course. haven't really had a good but track record. There's, there were just some aspects for me where 
I I did get bored. Yes, and this was a very self-contained movie as yes. well. Like, there's only one reference to Justice League. And I'm so glad it was so nicely self-contained. Mm, it was good. It allowed for great world building. Um, Fine, oh, we'll, I'll change it to a seven. Then. Don't change it. Keep it to a six. Stick to your guns. You're the one that's going to get slaughtered, not me, because I like it. Um, but one more thing just to touch upon, the de-aging Willem Dafoe. <sighs> that was weird. That was weird. And Hollywood at the moment has this thing for point of view shots. There's this really awkward shot where young young Aquaman and young girl Volko are having like a heart to heart, mm. and it just is it's constantly it, zooming. It in. changes point of view to between Arthur and Volko, and every so every so often it's just them staring like it's a, like it's like a bold it's kind of like beautiful. watching bold and beautiful aspects where it's like getting a little bit deeper and deeper yeah. as it's getting more and more intense in the moment. Yeah, and but, then suddenly you realise that he's married. No, I don't know. yeah, but it was just really odd. But yeah. that, that, once again, I'm nitpicking because I, yeah. I love this movie. So everything that I'm saying is a nitpick. Yep. Unlike you, who's just tearing it to shreds. Yes, I'm tearing it to shreds. Yes. But anyway, I loved it. I'm Trent. I'm Julia. And make sure you check out our other videos. Check out our weekly podcast where we discuss all the nerdy news of the week and all of our other content. Comics 101 is a new thing that we got going. And my first video is on Miles Morales, the yes. ultimate Spider-Man. So check all that out. Subscribe. Follow us at our handles at Fortress Notes. I'm Trent. Julia. And you're watching The, the Fortress. Fortress.